Serapis, also spelled Serapis, Greco-Egyptian deity of the sun, first encountered at Memphis, where his cult was celebrated in association with that of the sacred Egyptian bird Apis, who was called Osiris when deceased. He was just originally a god of the underworld, but was reintroduced as a new deity with many Hellenistic aspects by 305 to 284 BCE before Christ, who centered the worship of the deity at Alexandria. A letter from the Emperor Adrian to Silvanus, 134 AD. That means it was 134 years before Jesus was born. It stated, Egypt, which you commended to me, my dear Silvanus, I have found to be wholly fickle and inconsistent, and continually wafted about by every breath of fame. The worshippers of Serapis are called Christians. And those we are devoted to the god Serapis call themselves bishops of Christ. Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger, for I continue to work on the Prodigal Son and Daughter's Foundation. In other words, what you believe in today, have you ever checked what it is based on? Today we will be wondering, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Can you answer me, answer me the question? Is Jesus a Christian? When I posted that the first time, my wife got a little bit upset. She says, no, 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 don't do that. But you know, the fact is that most of us don't pay attention to what is normal. Everyone is a Christian or many people are Christians. But the question is, is Jesus a Christian? And if the answer is yes, then praise the Lord. But if the answer is no, I want you to be a bit concerned. Because what in the world are you celebrating in December 25th? Jesus Christ was born in a little manger. Whoa! And reality is, he was not even called Jesus Christ. Wow. Now, Confusing? Let's find out if I'm wrong. Because I believe that's what you would love to find out. You know, maybe that as Burak Caleb PhD, my PhD stands for Post Hole Dickery from the Desert University. Just to sum up, I am nothing special. I'm a normal guy like anybody else. When I grew up, my mom passed away when I was six years of age. I ended up in an orphanage with my brothers and sisters for seven years. And then my father remarried to somebody from Indonesia. Most people would be very happy, but I did not know what it was to live in a normal family. I was the oldest, and therefore, uh, shortly thereafter, when they found me hanging on a 
on the outside of a two-story building almost at the top of the roof I was kind of kicked out and I slept on the street sleeping on the street and that was in 1967 66 67 I ended also up working on Wall Street that was my desire for a long time in the mid 90s so yes I have done one as well as the other and in the process I was supposed to learn an awful lot which I always done I loved studying but one of the major issues that I never questioned was my professors the man of God that spoke the man that taught me how to read Bible, how to study the Bible, how to work with the Bible, the different schools where I went to. I was raised uh, in a Roman Catholic when my mom was still alive. When she passed away, we were no longer eligible or whatever it was called. Although I was an altar boy, I ended up in a seminary. And then from the seminary, I worked on a practical Bible school. Worked for 12 years as an evangelist in a maximum security prison and some other prisons around the world where I had a chance to speak and share with inmates till I became an inmate in Canada where I stood up against a Freemason unbeknownst to me my best friend wanted in on my deal that I had and I my office started growing we started doing millions of dollars and I sat on a package of a couple of billion dollars actually five billion dollars worth of assets my best friend wanted in on the deal and when I turned him down he was so upset he said you're gonna regret this do you know how much power I have as a Freemason I had no clue I was supposed to know because it was part of my study requirements but I just glanced over it he happens to be the head of the Freemasons and since then I learned if someone is determined to break your business to take everything away from you to light to steal and to destroy that person is working for satan so coming back now to today brer caleb what happened with brer caleb well in maximum security i was allowed to do certain things actually before i hit maximum security we were 18 years in court Normally, somebody that kills someone and he kills one, two or three people, at least in Canada, you go before the judge, uh, the judge will say, well, did you do it, did you not do it? They will do two, three, four days maximum, and off you go. You're sentenced. You might get four or five years. I had said no to the Freemasons. <laughs> I didn't know what I was in for, I must admit but the reality was it was the best thing that could ever happen to me 18 years in court six years with lawyers that i paid about 10 million dollars after i was run through my money and had no more money reality set in what are you going to do and as i sat in a cell i requested a computer and and books law books and I studied the law and that is where I saw things learn things that I'm sharing with you today see the law is a whole lot more I knew as a businessman the law because everything that we had to do was with money I hired the best people I had the top accountants I had the top real estate people I had the top people were cleared for a White House clearance etc etc they all worked for me Hundreds of thousands of dollars a month went out to salaries. Well, guess what happened? If there is a mistake, the one who owns the business, that's your business. If someone steals money from you, whether you know it or not, I was held liable. And so, forced to now face reality, I defended myself and my wife as well because both my wife and I were held liable. And so we stood in front of a judge. The first time we won a case, the Crown Attorney was very, very annoyed. Now I have to back up. 
The first couple of times, each time it got thrown out. Because the judge said, there is nothing wrong here. The guy didn't do anything wrong. But, if you have evil working against you, they will come up with something. So, after several years, 2005, or actually 2003, I got arrested. Because now they had a co-accused. The only problem with the co-accused was, he was being sued for $200 million by uh, certain groups from America. A group of believers, unbeknownst to us. And he had made a deal with the Crown that he would go against us and say that everything was invested with me. The only problem was we had never seen his money. We saw a little bit, and when I say a little bit, it was slightly under a million dollars, of which 35% had been returned, but that was not good enough. And so we went through court, and as we defended ourselves 12 years later, 2012, the judge sentenced me. Six years times three. And my wife got two years. The co-accused, he got time off, I believe, no, two years. The amazing part was we continued studying. And as I became more familiar with the law, I was told by the inmate commission, it's impossible, you cannot do that, that's impossible. And I appealed. Uh, the lawyer said, or said or recommended me, forget it, you can't do that. I was told again by the inmate committee, you cannot do that because we are all facing the same. And now we had a little problem. I had studied the law and I knew that we had a right. And guess what happened? 2015, we won the appeal. Mind you, the guys that I had rounded up, by now for maximum, I was in minimum security. I was cooking for myself. I had a whole bunch of people that we informed about their rights. I was not allowed to show up before a judge. But since my wife had 10 ladies, they went together before the judge and our case was used. And based on our case, they got an appeal. And because we won an appeal, over 500 inmates, men and women were released because certain issues were illegal. In their eagerness to make sure that they would keep my mouth shut because I refused to share the billions of dollars of potential profit with the Freemasons, they would teach me a lesson. And guess the lesson that I learned from God Almighty and the Lord called unto Moses. He called out from the mountain and saying, Come unto me, for I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Wow! You see, often as a child, I wondered what it would be to have a mother. Since mine passed away, she died when I was six. I cannot say it wasn't traumatic, childhood, uh, just something that happened in my life. But it made me question many, many things. Since I did not always know what the best way was of expressing myself, it appeared that I was angry often. Often explained as very unfavorable. As far as I remember, I stuck my nose in my books and one book I carried with me was a book from Norman Vincent Peale. And his book was called The Power of Positive Thinking. Yes, folks, books has helped me through. I remember that I stood in the uh, in front of a mirror practicing how to smile because I didn't know how to smile as a kid. But 
I learned some other things as well. It was not important to um, be successful in everything that you do, but you kept on focusing on better times and not realizing that the best things happened were right in front of me. The biggest lesson I learned actually in the seven decades, because right now I'm 70 years old plus a half a year, so in the seven decades that this journey has been going on, that joy is more about deduction than adding. In other words, it's not what you want to get, but that it's just cutting out certain things in your life. Like Bruce Lee was an, a man, Bruce, maybe you know him. He was a martial art instructor, but he was also a philosopher. It's not the daily increase, but daily decrease. Hack away at the essentials. The things that are not necessary, cut them out of your life. That's basically what he was saying. I stayed for almost six months in Japan during that time that uh, Bruce Lee was really at the top of his career. And it was amazing to see those guys. But some inessentials are negative information. Maybe watching TV or reading the news over and over and over. It will increase the anxiety, your fatigue and lack of sleep. For some, this might be the worst of all, to cut your social media time. Whoa, what without this? But you see, if you cut it out of your life, you will notice something. One reason I moved to Canada was the performance requirements. Whatever I did, it was never good enough. Looking back, that working with family can cause great anxiety was one reason my wife and I left for Canada. When I had a proposal, when I came back and uh, we got to know actually that I needed to settle down in Holland for a while, I went back to university, started with COBOL. And in the process, I was among a group of people from Ambon. And I really had a great time, great food, but we arranged something. So I talked to my father and said, I need a loan for $25,000. And with that, I was gonna fly in and a whole bunch of people back to Ambon. That was in the early 70s. One little problem, my father refused to give me the funds, but he did something else. He said, I will set you up in a business with your brother, and then you're gonna help him. Well, that was not exactly what I was looking for, but being broke at that time and not knowing exactly what I was going to do, I took it on and continued studying. So what I did recognize is when the attachment of happiness to my achievements were disconnected, every time I had to perform better. When my business went well, my father said, well, why don't you give it to your sister and then we'll help you with this, which I did. My sister needed something. But the reality was I was pushed and I pushed myself because they had a hard time studying. I studied and picked up the books quickly, realizing that with knowledge you obtain a lot. But if everything you do is not good enough, doesn't matter how big the deal was, it was always pushed for more. I was grateful when my wife and I eventually made the decision to go to Canada because now I could work on my own. Although it took a while because I kept on putting that same pressure. And so each time when the bar changed, it looked like it was never good enough. And in my life, I've been pushing myself for a very long time because I was so used to being pushed. And so you say, well, what is wrong with that? Well, I had the chance to listen up to a couple of speakers like Jim Rohn. I met him in person. And that was awesome in the early 80s. Improving your skills, your communication skills, becoming tolerant of others, be kind, more patient, less judgmental, etc., etc. However, Personal developments make a more skillful person out of yourself. It is the growth internally and the creator's understanding which, was, which will really change your life.
And now we come back to the situation, is Jesus a Christian? Now, when Mr. Trump was elected, he said, I will bring Christmas back because he likes the celebrations for Christmas. But when someone in authority speaks, most of us realize to pay attention. So people are, wow, we're going to choose him. And millions of people, and particularly the body of Christ, there are about 200 million people that claim to believe in the United States. And 71 million people re-elected Trump because whatever it was. But not voting for a moron shows that you have maybe good judgment. And when I say a moron, it's someone that does not understand. Because if Jesus is a Christian, okay, I can follow that. But what if Jesus is not a Christian? See, Christian, the name Christian was a follower of a deity, of a God. And that was way before Jesus was born. So the gods that people were praying to were Moloch, were satanic, were baby uh, killers. You sacrificed the baby and the blood from the baby was supposed to satisfy the gods. That is what a Christian was. So how in the world did we get to change from the people that followed Jesua HaMessiah, because that was the proper name of Jesus, that got changed by the Greek philosophers into Jesus. And now we have people that call themselves Christians. Well, they were followers. Christians were followers hundred years before Jesus was born. So how in the world can we switch from the followers of Jesua, Hamashiach, which represented the way, the truth and the light? So we have a little problem. Now, I can go very deep and very heavy, but I go simple. Okay, let's go to the bondage of darkness. And the Lord called Moses out of the mountain. In other words, Moses, come over. And Moses said, yes, Lord. And said, we shall have the light. We shall have the law for thy people. So I will have a law for your people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Now, remember in paradise, there was also an agreement. God created everything and Adam and Eve were around and all of a sudden Satan came in and he got them out of the paradise by persuading them to listen to Satan. Then we have a recognition, eventually Moses Moses, the man of God, who spoke with God directly, he had the tablets, he had the Ten Commandments, but they worked for the children of light. And so when Moses walked down with the Ten Commandments, what happened? He saw them dancing and celebrating and praying to a golden calf. And he got so mad, he destroyed those Ten Commandments. And God said, sure, I'll make you another Ten Commandments, but those are not for the children of light, because the children of light shall be in their hearts. Confusing? So, what happened now? In the law, I am the law, God says, which has brought thee out from the depth of the bondage of darkness. So there was a bondage, a darkness, so the agreement that the Lord had with Adam and Eve, that he wanted to renew with a new covenant, that is the covenant that Jesus completed. Confusing or simple? Adam failed. Moses could not complete it because the Ten Commandments were pulverized because he got so mad how they were insulting God. And now God gave him a third chance and Jesua HaMashiach was the one that completed that covenant. Because why is it so important to understand the covenant of God? When God speaks, his word, words are law. That means when he set the human beings to live eternal, the tree of life, okay, 
that means that that is love that has to happen. But the children of God, Adam and Eve, were persuaded by Satan to take a hike. And so now the will of God was stopped for a moment because the eternal life for the children were not there. And now the door was open, the way, the truth, and the light. And that is why Jesua HaMashiach is not Jesus the Christ born in a manger. He is a man of God that opened the way, the truth, and the light. And now the new covenant that God got close with them, those are for the children of light. And so if you call yourself back to bondage, the bondage of darkness, and you call yourself Christian, and you wonder what in the world is the problem? Why are we constantly running into disaster after disaster? Because we are not even following the Ten Commandments. Yes, folks. When Jesua HaMashiach spoke about the Ten Virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. And we have automatically people say, oh, but that means 50-50. I could be the one. No, that's not how it works. It was an example of those that were the children of the light where God, God himself, was totally manifesting his power in the life of the five wise virgins. So if you claim yourself to be a Christian, go back and find out what a Christian meant. Why was Plato talking about Christians and the Bishop of Christ? People that were praying to deities. And if you go to Iran, you will find a lot of the gods there connected. And you say, yeah, but, but what, what is it going on? Nobody told me. Well, I'm sharing with you. It sounds strange. But legalistic perversion, something that is perverting the Torah, God says there is a no-no. So the community of the body of Christ, if we now select a, pri a president, he is in the White House taking out all kinds of weird stuff because he is promoting certain things and the body of Christ, the leadership or those that I consider leaders like Paula White, Sid Roth, John Hakey, and there are more leaders, I understand that, Kenneth Copeland, Pat Robertson, those that have an impact on millions of people and they are claiming that God spoke for President Trump will be re-elected and there is another president-elect. When do you wake up, folks? I'm not attacking you. It took me seven decades to learn this. Then it took me actually one decade to verbalize it because as I was writing the book about the deception protocol for the blueprint, the prodigal son blueprint, a book that I published last year in Amazon, it became more and more clear the spiritual aspect what I had to learn. And as I am now verbalizing it, I'm sharing with you, some of you folks say, well, it's utterly nonsense. I would suggest Focus on the fact that if a judge was asking you, why do you believe in Christ? Why do you call yourself a Christian? Is Jesus Christ a Christian? Now maybe, maybe it was correct what I shared with you. See, the first time when I heard this, I got mad. I said, that's impossible. I don't want to believe it. But facts can't figure, but figures don't lie, but liars can figure. If you are a person that is honest to yourself, you owe it to yourself to figure out what is happening. I am the one sharing with you. I learned it before a court in Canada because the law, there is a special connotation. When the Ten Commandments came for the children of light, and Moses heard the voice of God 
and sealed within him the covenant between the Lord and the children of light. Folks, that is awesome. But for those that are not walking in the light, there is a depth of bondage, of darkness. And you know, when it is dark, like we're facing now in this society, it's scary. If we face a pandemic and we don't know where we're going to, it is scary. But if you get to know the Lord, the Lord of light, and you become the children of light by following the way, the truth, and the light, that is the message that Yeshua sacrificed his life for, not to be a little baby in, the Be in Bethlehem, because that is nonsense, folks. I hate to bring it to you, but wake up and smell the roses. And the solution, there is a simple solution. It took me a long time, but I repented. It took me a longer time, and I repented. Because I noticed repentance, what you say, and repentance that you do are two different things. So, folks, I hope that this will help you. I keep it simple. I don't want to talk difficult. But when God says I should repent, and repent is an option, a repentance, that means, Father, I was wrong. Thank you for opening my eyes. Consider those options. Now, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.